Chapter 60. Of Madness, and Divinations which are made when men are awake, and of the power of a melancholy humor, by which spirits are sometimes induced into men's bodies. It happens also sometimes, that not only they that are asleep, but also they that are watchful do with a kind of instigation of mind, divine, which divination Aristotle girls ravishment, or a kind of madness, and teacheth that it proceeds from a melancholy humor, saying in his treatise of divination, melancholy men, by reason of their earnestness, do far better conjecture, and quickly conceive a habit, and most easily receive an impression of the celestials. And in his problem saith, that the Sibyls, and the Bacchides, and Niceratus the Syracusan, and Amon, were by their natural melancholy complexion prophets, and poets. The cause therefore of this madness, if it be anything within the body, is a melancholy humor, not that which they call black cola, collar, which is so obstinate, and terrible a thing, that the violence of it is said by physicians, physicians, and natural philosophers, philosophers, besides madness, which it doth induce, also to entice evil spirits to seize upon men's bodies. Therefore we understand a melancholy humor here, to be a natural, and white cola, collar. For this, when it is stirred up, burns, and stirs up a madness conducing to knowledge, and divination, especially if it be helped by any celestial influx, especially of Saturn, who seeing he is cold, and dry, as is a melancholy humor, hath his influence upon it, increaseth, and preserveth it. Besides, seeing he is the author of secret contemplation, and estranged from all public, public, affairs, and the highest of all the planets, doth elway ease as with call his mind from outward businesses, so also makes it ascend higher, and bestows upon him the knowledge, and passages of future things. And this is Aristotle's meaning in his book of problems. By melancholy, saith he, some men are made as it were divine, foretelling things to come, and some men are made poets. He saith also, that all men that were excellent in any science, were for the most part melancholy. Democritus, and Plato attest the same, saying, that there were some melancholy men, that had such excellent wits, that they were thought, and seemed to be more divine than humane. So also there have been many melancholy men at first rude, ignorant, and untractable, as they say Hesiod, Ion, Tinnitus, Chalcinensis, Homer, and Lucretius were, who on a sudden were taken with a madness, and became poets, and prophesied wonderful, and divine things, which they themselves scarce understood. Whence divine Plato in Ion saith, many prophets, after the violence of their madness was abated, do not well understand what they wrote, yet treated accurately, accurately, of each art in their madness, as all artists by reading of them judge. So great also they say the power of melancholy is of, that by its force, celestial spirits also are sometimes drawn into men's bodies, by whose presence, and instinct, antiquity testifies men have been made drunk, and spake most wonderful things. And that they think happens under a threefold, threefold, difference, according to a threefold apprehension of the soul, viz. imaginative, rational, and mental. They say therefore, when the mind is forced with a melancholy humor, nothing moderating the power of the body, and passing beyond the bonds of the members, is wholly carried into imagination, and doth suddenly become a seat for inferior spirits, by whom it oftentimes receives wonderful ways, and forms of manual arts. So we see that any most ignorant man doth presently become an excellent painter, or contrivers of building, and to become a master in any such art. But when these kinds of spirits portend to us future things, they show those things which belong to the disturbing of the elements, and changes of times, as rain, tempests, inundations, earthquakes, great mortality, famine, slaughter, and the like. As we read in Aulus Julius, that Cornelius Patarus his priest did at the time, when Caesar, and Pompey were to fight in Thessalia, being taken with a madness, foretell the time, order, and issue of the battle, battle. But when the mind is turned wholly into reason, it becomes a receptacle for middle, middle, spirits. Hence it obtains the knowledge, and understanding of natural, and humane things.
So we see that a man sometimes doth on a sudden become a philosopher, physician, physician, or an excellent orator, and foretells, foretells, mutations of kingdoms, and restitutions of ages, and such things as belong to them, as the Sibyl, Sibyl, did to the Romans, but when the mind is wholly elevated into the understanding, then it becomes a receptacle of sublime spirits, and learns of them the secrets of divine things, such as the law of God, the orders of angels, and such things as belong to the knowledge of things eternal, and salvation of souls. It foresees things which are appointed by God's special predestination, as future prodigies, or miracles, the prophet to come, and the changing of the law. So the Sibyls, Sibyls, prophesied of Christ a long time before his coming. So Virgil understanding that Christ was at hand, and remembering what the Sibyl, Sibyl, Cumia had said, sang thus to Pollio. Last times are come, Cumia's prophecy now from high heaven springs a new progeny, and time's great order now again is born, the maid returns, Saturnian realms return. And a little after intimating that original sin shall be of no effect, saith, if any prince of our old vice remained by thee th a void, and fear shall leave the land, here God's life shall take, with God's shall see mixed heroes, and himself their object be, rule with paternal power th appeased earth he shall dash then he adds, that thence the fall of the serpent, and the poison of the tree of death, or of the knowledge of good, and evil shall be nulled, saying, dash the serpent shall and the deceitful herb, herb, of venom fall. Yet he intimates that some sparks of original sin shall remain, when he saith, some steps of ancient fraud shall yet be found. And at last with a most great hyperbole cries out to his child, as the offspring, offspring, of God, adoring him in these words, dear race of gods, great stock of Jupiter, behold! The world shakes on its ponderous axe, see earth, and heavens immense, and th ocean tracts how all things at th approaching age rejoice. Oh! that my life would last so long, and voice, as would suffice thy actions to rehearse. There are also some prognostics, which are in the middle, middle, betwixt natural, and supernatural divination, as in those who are near to death, and being weakened with old age, do sometimes foresee things to come, because as saith Plato, by how much the more men are less hindered by their sense, so much the more accurately they understand, and because they are nearer to the place whither they must go, and their bonds being as it were a little loosed, seeing they are no more subject to the body, easily perceive the light of divine revelation.